Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, The Shadows of Arm. And when last we left off, remember when I said that we wouldn't have many challenging fights down here? Clearly, I forgot about the full adventuring party that are waiting for you, so that they can get 1,000 gold out of you if you decide to pay up. Which, of course, I didn't, because I like having all my gold, and I like having all of their equipment, which they gave to us after we defeated them. And by gave, I mean that we killed them. To be fair, they were the ones that instigated combat, and they were definitely ready for a fight. They had a mage and a cleric and lots of frontline fighters. We were only victorious because we could deal with their mage really quickly with an overwhelming amount of melee combat, and I really need to remember to remove the Cloak of Dragomir when we go into dungeons or to places that are underground. Next time, eh? I'll remember when we go into the next dungeon. We were victorious either way, so let's get this level up done. We gain 2 hit points for Hexad, 3 lore, 25 skill points, and 1 weapon proficiency point, which is going into short bow. No more penalties for using that bow. As for the skills, we're just going to put them into open lock and find traps, because let's face it, I only ever really use those two abilities. That is done. We need to double check that there's nothing more now. that needs to be passed over to Edwina, and there are quite a few things that need passing over for identification. And we might as well put that potion there. And all of this needs identifying as well. Fortunately, Edwina's law stat is significant enough that we can get most of this identified, I imagine, without using the glasses of identification, that I keep calling goggles of identification. I think the mistake comes about because I've been in a campaign where we did have goggles of identification. Let's get started with identifying things. We have arrows of fire, that's to be expected, a single bolt of lightning, that gets to go over to the bag of holding, a protection scroll that we don't know the identity of, we'll identify that in a moment, full plate that is magical that we don't know the identity of, a throwing axe that we don't know the identity of, though I think I know what that is. A small shield plus two, now that is really impressive. We're going to have Corgan have that one, and we'll just store this one in the bag of holding. A helm of charm protection, now that is really useful. Corgan will have that as well. And the wyvern's tail. Every time you hit with this weapon, it is a plus two weapon, save versus poison or take five hit points of poison damage. That is really impressive as well. And we have a suit of plate mail plus one. Not so useful, because we have some really good armour. We'll put this in here. Don't put that in the gem bag, that's not going to fit. And we'll put that in there, and then we'll start looking at these. This is a cursed scroll of petrification. Let's put that on the ground and pretend that we never picked that up. This is Hangard's Axe plus two. If this weapon had a lofty beginning, it has been overshadowed by the exploits of its most famous owner, Hangard the Dwarf. Hangard made a habit of trying to knock melons and apples off the heads of comrades. He missed more often than not, due in part to an unfortunate fondness for ale. That is a significant upgrade for Corgan. And finally, full plate plus one. We're gonna give that to Dawn. We can get rid of these, and we can actually pass this over to Terry now, because this weapon can be used either at range or in melee, and when you throw it, it always comes back. Very handy. We're gonna give Corgan this suit of full plate, this helmet that's better than the uh, Eyes of Truth, and this shield, giving him a very impressive armor class of minus three. There's also this scroll that we can pass over to Edwin, though I think he already knows it. Yep, he already knows it. Into there you go! And a minor upgrade here for Dawn. We'll replace the uh, plate mail plus one with full plate plus one, giving both Corgan and Dawn Ilkhan an armor class of minus three, and Terry an armor class of minus five. It's a very impressive selection of armor classes for our front line. With all the identification of things done, and everything divvied up, growling. it's time to save, and then rest. If we're fortunate, we won't have an encounter. If we're unlucky, we'll be fighting some goblins. No goblins today. Brilliant. Let's get some spellcasting done. 
armor and then stone skin. Both are very useful for Edwina. There's stone skin. Brilliant. And we have this here. Can we open this? Let's have a look. No. Is it trapped? We didn't have much time to look for traps when the combat was happening, so it's time to check. Doesn't seem like it. But we can't open it from here. The mechanism that operates this does not have a conventional lock and may be warded against simple spells. Hmm. We'll keep that in mind. Not we too. may have to uh, go in there at some point. There's an enemy over there. We very briefly saw that foe. Did that enemy just appear out of nowhere? Here are enemies that didn't appear out of nowhere. There's a lot of kobolds here, and there's somebody with the kobolds that we need to take care of, because I now remember what this fight is all about. We're going to be facing a fearsome foe. It's time to get an undead companion here. It's also time to get some more buffing done. I think this here. And then we'll get a... Uh, Minor spell turning. Yes, it is. And then I think bless, which will just make it so that we uh, hit a little more often. There we go. Leave me be. And then I think we'll get a summon monster three done, so that we can uh, should have done that before the bless. But either way, what do we get? We get one ogre berserker. What is it now? Pretty handy. And finally, haste. Haste is going to be the most important spell here, because we need to close the gap very quickly between our front line and the real threat of this encounter. The real threat being this Rakshasa. Rakshasas are fearsome foes, and Rakshasas aren't really affected by spell casting. We need to switch this weapon from Throne to Melee, and they're all going to attack, all as one. We're going to get our Ogre Berserker to also attack. We're going to... No, nope, you definitely need to attack. I was trying to click Hexat there. We need Hexat to move over to here. We need you to move over to here. And we need Edwina to move a little bit further forward. Because Edwina has a target to Magic Missile, a Kobold Shaman. Whereas Hexat has a Kobold Witch Doctor, yep, over there, to use arrows on. I remember those two enemies being there because those two enemies can be quite a thorn in your side. One entangle makes this fight so much more tricky. What you need to do is, quite simply, get really close to the Rakshasa and hit a lot with melee attacks while your ranged combatants whittle off all the kobolds. And the poor skeleton warrior is late to the party. But that's okay, the Rakshasa is already gone. It's time to clean up. That fight can be quite difficult if you let it get out of hand. But we didn't. Pre planning and going in with a uh, battle plan in mind really does help. We have something that we can loot over here. I remember this because that is a lot of loot. But this is also a very nice piece of loot. Right here. This magical cloak. There's also a short sword and two more of those uh, flame arrows. And two more flame arrows. We'll give those over to Edwina to identify. And we'll also give the sword over to Edwina to identify. This is a short sword plus one. And some more arrows of fire. You might as well hold on to the arrows of fire. As for the cloak, I don't think Edwina can identify that, so we'll use the glasses. The Cloak of the Sewers. I remember this, and it's quite an awesome item. For a surface dweller like Ivan, survival meant going where others refused. Hiding from thugs, Ivan went so deep into the sewers beneath Baldur's Gate that he found natural caves, some of which opened to the ocean. Within one cave, Ivan discovered what he thought was a ruined cloak, all torn and stained. He tossed it into the fire he started, but it would not burn. Curious, he donned it, and with some prying, he discovered its hidden abilities. With the right command, he could shift into a rat, a troll, or a mustard jelly. Those polymorph self once per day abilities are quite useful. It's the armor class plus one that is really handy. And that stacks with other things that confer a magical bonus to armor class. So we can give Dornil Khan 
an armor class of minus four. Hmm. We're going to head over here now because we pretty much explored the entirety of the sewer area. There is here, though, with a lot of awesome goodies that Edwina is going Leave to pick up, because Edwina will need to identify all of them. We have some ammunition, we also have a scroll. Edwina already knows that, so we'll put that there. We have some bullets plus two, Vaconia can have them. We have some bolts plus two, you might as well hold on to them. Arrows plus two, they're pretty useful, and some darts of wounding. I suppose you could hold on to them, not that you're ever really going to use them. I will tolerate and with that only loot so much. Uh, grabbed, we'll go over here and find one carrion crawler. Let's we can deal with you. one Let's carrion see. crawler. The carrion crawler is gone. Note the experience that we got for taking care of the carrion crawler was more than... Oh, there are some kobolds. Or, oh, nope, they're be goblins, quickly. actually. I thought they were kobolds. Goblins they be. We'll take care of them either way. There won't be many of them. You're gone. You're gonna be gone. The uh, Ogre Berserker rushed forward and then was unsummoned. Alas, you did not get to hit them, but you tried! Minipal seems very happy about fighting these goblins, but the encounter is probably over too fast for Lilicor's liking. Minor trinkets are our reward and away into the old tunnels. I do remember this. The old tunnels are where we need to go. So progress is this way. It looks a lot like a sewer, and it still pretty much is the sewers, but we're making progress. And what we want to do is we want to move somebody forward very quickly so that we get into combat with Oh, there isn't a foe here this time. Sometimes there's a mephit here. Quite often it's an ooze mephit, and it attacks with a cloud effect yeah. that's quite dangerous. Very well. Fair enough, we'll keep moving. This encounter, however, I do remember quite well. What we want to do is we want to keep everybody what back you, here. Why? because yeah, there's a, a trap, bit, 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 even well, though we can't bit. see it with a Detect Traps ability. Second. There's nothing here right now, but these alcoves are there for a reason. There is a trap Tell further ahead. We're not going Lady to trigger that Paul. right will have, now, yeah. because if we do, this combat not will be a lot more it. difficult. We want to move forward. There's a shadow. There's a pair of shadows, actually. There are quite a few shadows that are going to... Uh, do battle with us, and shadows can be dangerous. They do have the ability to uh, drain some strength. We will get it back quite quickly afterwards. We'll take care of you, after we've of course taken care of this one, and then we'll move a bit further forward. There are more shadows after all. There's one over there that we need to fight. Have at thee! One shadow versus three frontline fighters? Not much of a challenge. We're now going to move Hexad forward and put all of our fighters over here. There's a trap that we are going to get rid of. It is gone now, and here come the Etacaps! That trap, I believe, is a web. And if we uh, trigger that, the Etacaps appear, and they can take care of your uh, backline quite effectively. As it stands, we were pretty well prepared for this, so we've taken care of them without too much difficulty. Edacaps aren't too challenging. We do have a Moonstone Gem here. Moonstone Gems are nice. We also have a scroll that we can't really use. Not really effectively anyway. So let's move forward. There's another pair of shadows. Now we want to move Hexat back because we don't want Hexat to be hit by these. Thornil Khan has been hit by them, but that's not too bad. We'll move forward now. There's a ladder that we can't use, there's nothing that we can loot, and so forward we go to more encounters with another pair of shadows. Let's keep fighting! If you think the fact that shadows are here is a worrying uh, development, you're right, it is a worrying development. Let's move forward even more. Ah, here. 
Now I remember here, if you think that here is a very dangerous trap, you're absolutely right. Here is a very dangerous trap. I remember this one. How do we deal with it? Notice that there's something we can use here and there's a door. We can close the door. We can open the door. Let's go in, shall we? And get ready with this. As we try to move through. We won't get far. Or will we? Maybe we haven't triggered the trap. We haven't managed to trigger the trap. I'm surprised at that. Do we have... Ah, there we go. As you near the center of the room, the door clangs shut and you hear the hiss of gas. An orange cloud begins to fill the now sealed chamber. We want to go and use this very quickly. We use it once. It says, uh... There is a wheel in the middle of this chamber. Perhaps turning it will reveal its function. Oh, it does, because it opens the door. And now we can uh, get out of here. If that is, we can get past these vampiric mists. We're going to have to get a bit of help here. Unfortunately, they've blocked Terry in, and we need to get out of here. Let's fight them. I didn't want to fight them in here, but I don't have much choice. One of them's gone. Let's get out of here quickly. I believe they can turn invisible. There we go. They can turn invisible because that one is now here and trying to fight us. They can level drain those vampiric mists. We don't want that to happen, though we could use lesser restoration with Faconia to get rid of the level drain. Lesser restoration is a really good spell. If you had your entire party in here, and say, a magician here and your thief here, the vampiric mists could do a very, very fine job of destroying them. As it stands, we're just going to have to wait for the, uh, for all of this, uh, mist to dissipate, which it has. Mm. One trap dealt with. There's somebody in here, though, Ooh, and like there's it. the symbol of an eye. Victory shall no, not These not. all must be traps I that have been uh, set by the cult of the unseeing eye. We've managed to get through. Hopefully we can talk to them. It may work to yeah. our advantage to pretend not to doing. want to join so that we can get more information from them. There is an elite guard, another elite guard, and Gaul. Let's talk hmm. to Gaul, shall we? Get our party assembled here and say hello. Gold, you tread on sacred ground. Only those who serve the unseeing eye may enter. I am Gaul, high priest of the one god. I wish to know more. How does one serve your unseeing eye? The one god has demanded that his disciples achieve a higher state of wisdom. You must remove that which is limiting and offensive. The unholy eyes are removed from your head during the sacred initiation. If you survive and are proven faithful, the unseeing eye accepts you into service. What if I'm not interested in having my eyes removed? Hmm, it is a sign of weakness to refuse the enlightenment. Would you walk about willingly without arms, without feet? I do not think so. Still, the unseeing eye could use the skills of one such as yourself. An exception could, perhaps, be made in your case. There is something that you could do that the Great One cannot, despite his vast power. Assist in that, and I will admit you into the ranks and into the unseeing one's presence. Yes? Tell me what it is, and I'll consider it. These holy grounds are part of a larger, ancient structure, dangerous if one ventures into the lower levels. The unseeing eye knows of a valuable item in this area. If you were to venture below, you could prove your worth by retrieving this artifact for him. Do this, and I will allow you into our ranks and the one's divine presence. What is this item you speak of, and where would I locate it? The item is a rod, or part of a rod, rather, that you will find atop a holy altar. I cannot tell you more than that. You must let your faith guide you. And how would I get to these lower levels? I have a key I can give you. 
This will allow you entrance to the inner chambers through a door a short distance back the way you came, at the sewer passages. Ah! A door by the entranceway to the old tunnels that I saw. That's where we need to go. Very well, I shall do as you suggest. You are worthy in my eyes, faithful one. Here is the key. Once you have the rod, bring it to me, and together we shall present it to the unseeing eye. We're slowly working to gain favor with the cult of the unseeing eye in the hopes that they will reveal something to us. Like Whatever who the leader of this cult is and how we can deal with them. It's quite likely they won't tell us the latter, but they will certainly give away the former eventually. And who knows, maybe the item we're getting will be useful in dealing with the cult. We can only hope, eh? And when we come back, folks, we've dealt with all the traps here. They didn't slay us despite their best efforts to do so. And we'll go through this door to an even older part of the underground areas. And here is that method that I thought would be there to begin with. We need to move back because this could very well... Oh, we don't want to go there. We want to go down into here and get out of this Cloud, because I think it will knock people in our party unconscious. Just keep moving right now. Eventually we'll get to combat. There we go. The ooze method isn't going to be that difficult without that cloud. Indeed, the method was lucky then. 420 experience, not bad. And when we come back, folks, the cloud will be gone and we'll be able to move forward. We may even rest, who knows? And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.